Hello, this episode we spend some time in North Stradbroke Island sightseeing. We also spend a week at Rivergate Marina, Brisbane and Doomsday Prepped. We got overtaken by a barge doing Tin Can Bay bar crossing. You can see the ground. The Pacific Star is on the ground. And I had to lower down our food shopping off the pier in Harvey Bay due to weather conditions and spending a night in a hotel. That was a really nice treat. Do we know what we've caught here, hon? <laughs> and we caught a few mug crabs at Fraser Island before doing an overnight sail and arriving at Lady Musgrave Island. Hello, this is Heidi, Zara and Josh. Follow us on our new adventure on board Sailing Catamaran Pacific Star. Recently, we left South Stradbroke Island, island hopping and dropping anchor in Dean Billa Bay in Dunwich. This is where we spent most of our time anchored up with a beach nearby, easy and safe to leave your tender at. It was only a 10 minute walk to get into town where there was two food shops, butchers, bakery, news agency, liquor store, restaurants, even a brewery there now. And we enjoyed a nice Chinese meal at the Stradroke Sports Club. We attempted to drop anchor at one mile anchorage, but it was pretty tight. And if we were to do it again, we would have beached a boat or pre-organized to stay on the jetty at the little ship club where you can pay to stay on the pontoon. We caught the bus to Point Lookout and enjoyed the North George walking trail. Later, ending up at the Point Bar where the Surf Life Saving Club is. Plus, we saw the Royal Australian Air Force F-18 and F-35 jets flying really low. After spending a couple of days at North Stradbroke, we decided to head in towards Brisbane, which was only 22 nautical miles. I just had to enter. This marina is exposed to the tide, so make sure you plan to be there on a slack tide. We had a little bit of tide on our bow, so we had to crab walk in to get into the berth, but it was fine. Our stay at Rivergate Marina was 10 out of 10, honestly. The facilities was awesome. The staff was super helpful, but overall our week stay was super comfy and close to everything. So yeah, highly recommend the marina. The extra bonus was they had a courtesy ute there where we were able to provision and get heaps of food and Josh Doomsday prepped on alcohol. This is the end. As we are leaving Rivergate Marina, we had to fuel up. Had a bit of a heart attack when looking at the bill for this one, but had to be done. We left the Brisbane River, heading north, spending an overnighter in Scarborough, and then the following day, heading into Mooloola Bar. The bar crossing was pretty good that day, and the following morning, we left and headed for Double Island Point. Just at Double Island Point, got the Great Sandy Straits right in front of us. Got a sandbar here where people link it up. We're gonna attempt Wide Bay Bar. Apparently, Wide Bay Bar is something pretty scary to do. So, yeah, better go do my morning poo poo so I don't shoot myself. Wide Bay Bar is notorious with shifting sandbars. When considering crossing the bar, it's highly recommended that you contact Tin Can Bay Coast Guard where they provide information and waypoints to cross the bar safely. As well, we found useful information in Cruising the Coral Coast book, which is basically like the Yachty's Bible. It goes into detail about the wind and tide conditions to safely enter the bar. The Coast Guard provided us with four waypoints which were entered into our GPS and we stuck to that track and we got to the other side safely. Just out in the distance here, you can see Great Sandy Straits and we're heading towards the Inskip with Fraser Island on the right. Got a barge that recently just overtook us as well. In the distance we could see the birds circling so Josh was tempted to put out the line and trawl for a bit. As you can see, we were very fortunate with doing the Wide Bay Bar Crossing. Later that evening, these two gentlemen weren't so lucky. Two men have been rescued in rough waters off Inskip Point after their boat capsized while crossing the Wide Bay Bar. Coast Guard volunteers say the pair weren't wearing life jackets and didn't inform authorities of their journey. Just letting you guys know that we're at point four and we're just wanting to log off. No problem, Pacific Star, glad you're through the bar safely. Have a wonderful afternoon and I will log you off. Coast Guard Tingam out. After the bar crossing, we headed towards Tingam Bay. 
it's clear. We've officially reached those brook. So we're at low tide, 0.7 meters. You can see the ground. Pacific Star is on the ground. Doing a draft check. Just sitting on the ground now, just so I want to see exactly how much water we draw. Zara stand against the pole. Oh yeah, 1100, you're right. Look at the marks from her pivoting. Here, Josh. Oh, Big problem. Big problem. That's a pirate ship. A pirate ship over there. We took a quick tender ride around the corner to the public jetty, visiting this awesome park. My opinion, it's the best park since we've been traveling and Zara was able to burn off a lot of energy. Like this side. Sitting with the most anti-sociable person in the bar. <laughs> no one decent to talk to. We did a quick food shop at the IGA before returning back to Pacific Star. We spent two nights in Tincan Bay and really enjoyed our time here. Good morning! It's a nippy morning. Um, we're heading up towards Fraser Island today. Are you excited, Zara? Yeah. <laughs> Yay! We spent one night at South White Cliffs. Next day, ended up at Kingfisher Bay visiting the sandbar. They had a wicked games room there, which Zara thoroughly enjoyed. Plus, they had a public swimming pool. After spending two nights here, we ended up making our way over to Harvey Bay. Would you like a cup of tea or a baby chino? No. We commuted around town a fair bit, shopping, getting parts of the boat, and also sightseeing. This place was truly magic. The beaches were gorgeous. Even these very little buggers were quite friendly. And there's heaps of walking trails, which Zara enjoyed. <laughs> so I did food shopping and um, it's a bit swelly. It doesn't actually look like much, but there's actually proper waves breaking along here for me to carry the shopping on board. So I had to basically call Josh, dangle it down from a rope that he chucked me and they've gone, he's gone back to the boat. But I think I'm going to have to check into a cheap motel tonight. Oh, all we can do is just check in and yep. all right. Have fun. Look after my baby. Yep, here we go. So I naturally ended up at the pub enjoying a few drinks before checking into my hotel. Well, that was a really nice treat to be um, waking up in a bed without the boat doing this. Later that morning, I coffeeed up and waited for Josh to pick me up to unload the food shopping. Then we dropped off the hire car. Finally got the part that the USA I was looking for. Fixed in Marsella. It's only taken a month or so. It'll get us on our way. The next day, we sailed over to Sandy Point, Fraser Island. We decided to remove this off Pacific Star as true pirates do not have a home port. Gotta take this off. What a tiny looking crew. We know what we've caught here, hun? This. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Hopefully we get some crabs now. Oh, it's a bit sad that you caught the first fish on my new fishing rod. <laughs> the tide's still pretty low, so we've literally just got to make our way in between all these trees. <laughs> yeah. It's big isn't it? We'll see how far we can get up before I have to start rowing. At least the tide's coming up. You see it? Yeah, they're up at the Discovered a new island. I'm going to call it Pacific Star Island. I need to make the bloody holes bigger on these crab nets. These crabs are too big, I can't even get them out. They only stick in the area and you got it. What fish are we going to eat? 
Well, we got roast chicken for dinner tonight, Zara. Mm. So hopefully <laughs> we're moving on because it's not very comfortable. And I've, yeah, a little bit of rocking, I don't mind, but not a whole freaking two days of it. It's when I start getting seasick. And I've got a shitload of housework to do today. The realities of living on a boat, putting food shopping away, is the kitchen clean? No, kitchen's not clean. So yes. And then hopefully Josh will be back with some fish and we can eat fish for breakfast. Mm. Ooh. Just caught three more crabby crabbies this morning and this fella. Taylor. Yummy, yummy, yummy in a Taylor. We decided just to send it straight to Lady Musgrave Island, so we're about 30 knots of relative wind. Flying along at about six, seven knots. Yeah, going pretty good. Should be there by midnight. <laughs> yeah, so we'll probably have to slow, slow the boat down or then yeah, maybe pull up and get a mooring or anchor up. See how we go. about 40 knots on the beam, so it's been a pretty rolly night so far. I'm getting there. The current can rip through the entrance to the lagoon, and with the amount of bombies on the way in, this is definitely something we wanted to do in the daylight hours. We have arrived at Lady Musgrave Island. Yeah, Mummy did 15 hours at the helm sailing and Daddy chilled for a change. Didn't get much of a nap, but did he? Yeah. He was entertaining you, but we arrived around quarter past four in the morning and now we're just waiting for the sun to come up. Yeah, no worries. Just gonna cook up some crabs we caught over the next couple of days. Pulled up at Lady Musgrave. It's still pretty windy here, I'm like 20 knots, so yeah. Can't be bothered getting off the boat at the moment after like a 20, 20 hour sail. Just had a bit of a sleep, but might just have a cook up instead and a beer. Yeah. These bad boys, we're gonna cook some linguine tonight. Finally, we got mud crab on the menu. Yo! After all the boat jobs, it's finally time to start having some fun and catch some fish. Please like our video. Thank you.